Hey, welcome back to the program. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Uh, my name is Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner with Alan Colpine. He's a CPA. Thanks for tuning in. Wrapping things up, last segment, talking estate planning today. It's a very important topic because everyone's going to die, right? And so you want to make sure that you are set up appropriately uh, when you do pass or, unfortunately, if you get disabled, that your financial house is still in order. Now, when you think about this, there's a lot of information that you want to grasp. And one of the things that I do is that I teach a financial planning course. It's a retirement planning course uh, just all over Southern California. So if you want to get more information, if you want to sit down and learn all of this and figure out what you need to do on your own, I would encourage you to attend one of these courses. You can register at our website if you'd like at yourmoneyyourwealth.com, yourmoneyyourwealth.com. There's a registration form right there. I'm telling you, if you want to learn how to put all of this into play when it comes to your taxes, your investments, uh, your risk management needs, and of course, your estate plan, all of this is interrelated. Um, and so the course walks you through on how to set everything up on your own. I'm a big believer everyone needs a comprehensive financial plan, but everyone doesn't necessarily need a financial plan planner. So let's see, we're trying to empower you. We're trying to educate you. And so we did a true false question before the break. Let's see how you did. All right, let's see if you got this right. If I designate my 16 year old grandson as my IRA beneficiary, we won't, he won't have to take his distributions until he turns 59 and a half. And the answer to that question is absolutely false. And I would say this is one of the biggest misconceptions about IRAs when you inherit them and simply is this when you inherit an IRA and as if you're not the spouse if it's the next generation or, or brother sister you have to start taking uh, the RMDs required minimum distributions right away at age 16 at age 26 at age 40 it's not 59 and a half now 59 and a half is when you can start taking your own distributions out of IRAs without a penalty. But when you inherit an IRA, you have to start taking those required distributions right away based upon your life expectancy at that age. Yeah, it's a big deal because if there's a lot of money in there, right, here's the deal. Let's say that your 16-year-old son or daughter inherits that IRA. Let's say it's a large chunk. It's a million dollars. And so your younger child inherits it. They really don't know what to do with the money, right? They're 16 years old. They have to take a required distribution based on their life expectancy. And guess what? If they do not take that required distribution, so they have until April 1st, the following year after your death, so they have a little bit of time. But if they do not take that required distribution, there is a penalty of 50%, 50 percent, five zero, 50 percent tax penalty if they don't take the distribution. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you think your 16-year-old daughter or son will know that? No, of course not. The IRS is just waiting for you to die with huge amounts of money in these IRAs, 401ks, and everything else because they're going to make out like bandits. A lot of individuals do not understand these rules. The IRS is so convoluted, and now all this money is sitting in these retirement accounts just waiting to get blown up with tax. Here's another thing. is that Did you know, Al, that 80% of female will die alone? 80% of females will die alone. And I, so I've heard something like that, but that's a pretty exact stat. Where do you get that? What's your source? Well, it's my own source, Alan. It's called the Internet. <laughs> that's, your, that's your own survey? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Al Gore invented it. <laughs> you know, why do you always got to bust me on my stats? I read every second of every day. 80% of females die alone. You, look it up. But here's the problem. All right, so then now... What's the estate plan look like? Here's what we see. Here's a couple of mistakes that I've seen over the past maybe a couple of months is that, all right, well, let's say that mom lives in Minnesota, such as my mother lives in Minnesota, okay? And I'm not even going to these slides, so you can get rid of the slides. We're, 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 we're going off the cuff here. Is that, all right, mom's living in Minnesota, dad dies, now mom has a daughter in Minnesota, I'm in California, and let's say my brother lives in New York. So what does she do? She's like, okay, well, since my daughter is here close to me, I'm going to name her the beneficiary of my accounts, and she's going to be the executor of the accounts because she's close, right? And so if, I, if something happens to me, I don't have to bother Joe in California or Ben in New York. So guess what happens? So then mom dies, and then sister takes over. This doesn't happen, but this, I'm assuming this could happen. So Al, chime in anytime you like. Yeah, so then daughter, you're, you're right, well. she gets the money. She dies. Guess what? All right, now she's going to distribute out to me? How about if she's upset with me? Oh, wait a minute. She's married. Do you think I get along with a husband? Probably not. 
So there's a lot of mistakes that people make, just simple things that they think, all right, well, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to do all this elaborate state planning. Let me try to ease it on the kids. But guess what? It, it just blows it up even more. Yeah, here's one, Joe, that I just saw actually a couple weeks ago. And this is, uh, this is common. So this is somebody that actually had the right estate plan, and they named a, a, a trustee an executor for trustee for their trust. So that's good, right? But they have four kids and they named all four kids as, as co-trustees and they all live in different states. It's an absolute disaster because every one of them has to sign every single document and agree to this. And, and it's not really the best way to do it. The better way to do that, this is to just have a single uh, trustee that you trust, or if you don't, you could have a you could have a, a secondary trustee to at least sign off on it. But when you have four, five, six different siblings all having to sign up and they all sign off on this, these things, they will disagree time after time. And you were trying to have an orderly disposition of your assets, and it turns into an absolute right. It's, it's so, so they're all right. Well, here, let, let me sign this. Let me FedEx it to my sibling over in Colorado. Then she signs it. Oh, let me FedEx back over to Florida uh, to get um, you know brother Bob on it. Here's a personal story of myself. My grandmother, 95 years of age. Okay, she's smoking cigarettes, drinking beers, parties on Tuesday nights. Right, hanging out with the girls. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna live until I'm, got, I'm 150 if grandma's doing this at 95. She names my father and my uncle co-successor trustees, right? So my dad and my uncle, all right, so, you know, they're siblings. So what do you think happened when they get together for family, you know, get-togethers? They would start arguing, they would start fighting. It's like, guys, she's still alive, right? Sad story is my dad dies at age 61. My uncle, his brother, dies the next month at 65. So hopefully I'm, it's going to skip a generation for me. So grandma goes to me and she's like, Joe, I want you to be my successor trustee. Al, you know what I told her? I said, the last two people that had that job are dead. Yeah, There's you don't not want the a job. chance. There's no way. Did she give you the job? No, of course I took the <laughs> job. But here, I've been doing this close to 20 years. You would think I could clear this estate like anything else. But guess what? There's always going to be hiccups. The biggest advice from this show that I can give you is this, is have a family meeting. Meet with your kids. You don't necessarily have to tell them how much money that you have. But say, hey, if you do have some property, if you do have timeshares, if you do have, let's say, a safety deposit box, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you have this family meeting to make sure that siblings or your successor trustees are going to figure out what you need to do. Call our office. Get in. We can help you with all of this. 888-994-6257. That's the number. It's a free financial assessment. We're a fee-only financial planning firm. We specialize in this stuff. Call the number. Take advantage of it. That's it for us. For Big Al Clopine, I'm Joe Anderson. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You're watching Your Money, and it's your wealth.